What's up, everybody? Welcome to Air Science. I want to first remember where we were last week, which is figuring out how much humidity is in the air based on how much water is evaporating. So if you remember this idea that here in the desert it's very dry, therefore there's going to be a lot of evaporation, therefore the wet bulb, more evaporative cooling, so the wet bulb, which should be this thing right here, would go down by more. Whereas if it's very humid, um, less evaporation and less cooling. Now, this thing's new this year. And as it turns out, and indoors in winter, this is going to be one of the things I ask you later. So if you want to start to think about it now, why is it so dry indoors in winter, especially in big buildings with uh, the type of heating we have? Um, it's so dry that this little wick thing isn't even wet coming out of the <laughs> reservoir. It's wet down here. So it's this, I mean, I didn't know, but this thing doesn't work. Um, so what are you going to do? We're going to come up with a different way to do it anyway with a couple of thermometers. Um, so the relationship being the drier it is, the more water will evaporate and the more cooling happens. And we can use this contraption then to figure out what is going on with humidity. And that's what we're going to do right over here. So I'm not going to uh, lie to you that this gets a little bit tricky. Um, figuring out how to use these two reference tables here. I'll find they're in your reference tables first off. I'll also find a separate PDF of just these two tables um, so that you can just always have those. They look exactly the same, but one's called relative humidity. We got to figure out what that is and how to calculate it. One's called dew point. We got to figure out what that is and how to calculate it. So that means we got some new vocab to take care of. All right. The first one is I'd say the most commonly screwed up one. That's why I put it in here first. Wet bulb depression. All right, let's remember what we were doing here. And I know I just said it, but we're going to remember one more time. That if we have a dry bulb, regular thermometer, that's just what the temperature is, right? Dry bulb is a fancy name for regular plain old thermometer. And a wet bulb, that once water evaporates off this and cools, the temperature on this one's going to go down. Wet bulb depression, that fancy term, is how much did it go down by? Not what did it go down to? How much did it go down by? the amount that the wet bulb decreases is going to be what I type in this thing. Okay. It's tough to keep that in mind that if you read the wet bulb and it says 15, don't put 15 in there. You got to say, what did it, what did it start at? Which is why there's a dry bulb attached to these things. The reason why they have the, cause that is just like a regular thermometer. Again, that's just air temperature. But if this reads 15, the answer might not be 15. If this reads 15, it's going to be, what is the dry bulb? And how much did it go down by to get to 15? So let's pretend this was 20. This was 15. Your wet bulb depression is then going to be 5, not 15. Um, another way to say wet bulb depression is this sentence right here. Difference between wet bulb and dry bulb temperatures. I can't highlight that. It's a picture. Difference between wet bulb and dry bulb temperatures. That is wet bulb depression. It's how much it went down by. Having taught our science for, I don't know, like a decade now, the, a very common mistake, and one that some of you are going to make, and it's okay as long as we figure out how to get around it eventually and stop making that mistake, is that some people are going to just... <coughs> excuse me. Some people are just going to put the wet bulb temperature in there. So again, let's take that last example I had. What if the wet bulb reads 15? People are going to say, oh, well, this says uh, wet bulb, 15, right? Ignoring all these other words, that there's other words on here that say difference between wet bulb and dry bulb. If the wet bulb is 15, but the dry bulb was uh, 20, then our difference between wet bulb and dry bulb would be 5. Okay? That's what you're going to have to do down there below. We're going to practice a lot of them. We're going to practice enough that uh, you'll be sick of them. Sorry nature of the beast here. All right. So what the heck is dew point? It's the temperature. It's the temperature you got to get to, um, temperature at which condensation occurs. I don't know if red shows up better. Condensation. What condensation is, and you've all experienced this, is when, uh, the, I think the most common one is like in the summertime when you get water droplets on the outside of soda cans. You'll see it on windows this time of year. If it's more humid inside and the window's cold, you'll get condensation on the inside of your window at home. 
um, if your home's you know humid, depends on your humidity inside the home. Uh, it's also how we form clouds. The clouds in the sky are condensation. Clouds are liquid. They're, um, that's sometimes a newsflash for folks. Dew on the grass outside in the summertime, again, overnight, the air cools down to the dew points and it forms dew. It forms condensation. It's water droplets. I mean, condensation is one of our four phase changes. Freezing, melting, everybody pretty much knows. Evaporation, everybody pretty much knows. Like a puddle evaporates. Condensation is the opposite, going from of evaporation. Opposite of evaporation is going from a gas back to a liquid. Okay. Now that happens at a specific temperature, depending on the um, depending on the day, depending on the humidity, that temperature is not set. So when if you look at weather in the news, you're going to see temp and dew points. And that's what we're going to be trying to figure out here. What temperature would we have to get to for condensation to take place? When you have that soda can in the summertime, I don't have any around here, you know, but if I had an ice cold beverage in my coffee mug here, and it was a humid day, the sides of this cup would get cold enough that the air that's sitting right next to it would be cooled to the dew point and condensation would form. And it would form, sometimes we call it sweat. It's not sweat, but it would form these water droplets on the outside, which is why you need a coaster at home on tables so you don't get in trouble with your parents because all that condensation comes down and makes those little rings on wooden tables. So yeah, that's that. Relative humidity is like a very complicated idea that we simplify just to basically be like, what is the percentage of, of humidity in the air? What is the percentage of water vapor in the air relative to the amount for condensation to occur? And the, if that gets a little bit mouthy and wordy, don't panic so much on it. It's just like how humid is the air? If it's a hundred percent. It's, it's very humid. If it's down in the teens, it's outrageously dry. So percentage wise, how much water vapor is in the air? So to give you a real heavy sentence that you probably won't be able to wrap your head around just yet, but we're, this is, would be like our goal is by the end of this whole, maybe before we go home for Christmas break, would be that, to like have this sentence make sense in our head. If the air is cooled to the dew point, that would mean that the air is saturated, which means entirely full. Your shirt, if you go out in the rain, is saturated. It's entirely filled with water. Meaning the relative humidity is 100%. When you hit the dew point, you've made it to 100% relative humidity and condensation can occur. Now, again, that sentence is it's a lot. Don't panic if that is a little bit too much right now, but keep in mind that's where we're going. Uh, the probability we should, I want to get down there below, but this is just like probability. It's the chance of something happening. So if the wet bulb goes down by a lot, I guess this is a good review of what we did uh, last week. If it goes down by a lot, what's it like out there? Remember this up here. If it goes down by a lot because there's a lot of evaporation, it's very dry. And if it's very dry, then your probability or your chance of precipitation is going to be low. Whereas if the wet bulb doesn't go down by that much, that means it's humid. That means you're closer to the dew points. That means the humidity is higher and the probability of precipitation, I'm sorry, probability of precipitation is also higher. Describe the relationship between wet bulb depression and probability of precipitation. Now, you know, I love these relationship questions, mainly because the regents does them. We got to practice them. We always start the same way as, and then uh, look at your two variables. Wet bulb depression. So as wet bulb depression, and then you choose increase or decreases. So I'm going to go increases. You can answer it both ways. As wet bulb depression increases, what happens to the probability of precipitation? If you're getting more and more and more drop, that means it's drier and drier and drier. That means our probability of precipitation decreases. Precipitation, I'm not sure we've used that term yet, but if you've never heard it, it's just a $10 word for any form of water falling out of the sky. So it covers all of them, rain, sleet, snow, hail, all of those you can come up with. I'll qualify under precipitation, water falling out of clouds. Okay, here we go. 
fact, you know what? I'm going to just, I'm going to stop and just do it as a second, se- uh, separate video. I'm going to do it immediately. So there's not a huge difference, but maybe just a chance to like have it on two separate things, have people take a breath. So come on back for the next part. We'll see you in a minute.